So today, I just want to quickly go over um, how to get a console application up and running with SDK Engine. So this will show you how to implement SDK Engine with no graphics mode um, and just get a very basic application up and running that you can then expand on later. Um, so the first thing I need to do uh, is just open Visual Studio. So today, I'm going to be working in .NET, writing this application in C Sharp. Um, but you can do this in a variety of other languages as well. So I'm going to create a new project. And I'm just going to do a console application .NET Core. Um, you can do a .NET framework as well. But today, I'm just running in .NET Core. And I'm going to call this Intro to SDK Engine. Uh, OK, apparently I named one that before. Uh, <laughs> um, intro to SDK Engine again. And so while this creates, um, the basics of SDK Engine is that you're getting the full analytic backend behind SDK, um, but you are able to control it and write your own custom GUI on front of it and your own custom workflows and all of that. So here we have a application. I'm going to add references, which is the first thing I need to do. Once you're on the add references page, go to browse and then browse again. Where we need to grab these from is the SDK install location. So if we go to C, Program Files, uh, AGI, SDK 11 or 12, if you're running that now, uh, bin, and then primary interop assemblies, here you're going to see a variety of DLLs. And we only need a couple to get the application up and running. So we're going to grab the AGI.SDKX interop, the AGI.SDKX initialization interop, and then SDKutil.interop and SDKobjects.interop. So just these four, click Add, and then click OK. Um, it's going to take a second and add these over here. And now what we can do is we can simply say that we want a new AG SDKX application. And we'll call this SDKX application. We want this equal to a new AG SDKX application. And then we want a new AG SDK object root. And we will call this SDKX root. And this is equal to a new AG SDK object root, not class. And so now, once we have both the application started and the root started, I'm just going to have a console.write line here just to say application started. And then the rest of this, we can use typical object model syntax here. So we can say SDKX root dot new scenario. And I'm going to start a new scenario that says intro to engine as the name of the scenario. And then I'm going to say SDK, uh, or I'm going to write out the name of that to verify that we had that start. So if we go SDK X root dot current scenario, and then a console dot read line to stop the application or to freeze the application. So now if we just come up here and click start, uh, we will be able to see that this will start the SDKX application, start the uh, also initialize the root object, say application started, and then while it's creating that scenario in the back end, it's going to freeze for a second and then print out what the name of the scenario is. I printed out com object. I forgot to put dot instance name after the current scenario. Um, so once we run this now, it should print out the name of the actual uh, scenario. And you'll see that the only references that we actually used were AGI.SDK objects, which uh, includes most of the object model and how we control objects, and then the SDKX um, reference as well. And you'll see here now we have intro to engine is the actual scenario name, and the application started printed out. So obviously, this doesn't look like much, um, but we now have SDK engine up and running. Um, you can also later introduce the controls in a Windows Forms application to get a 3D globe and a 2D uh, map running in your application, put in buttons and everything. 
Um, but this is just the basics of getting everything started. Um, if you want to learn a little bit more, uh, you can also go to our help page. It's at help.agi.com, and you'll see this programming interface help. That will take you here, where you can learn more about how to control SDK via the object model um, and how to do this with other languages that aren't C Sharp as well. You'll be able to find this actual code too on our GitHub page down below. Um, that is it.